Hi everyone, I'm Lynn from Finds of Yesterday. Thanks for stopping in. Today we're talking Trafari Jewelry and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the company and I'm going to show you some of their creations and many of their pieces and also their markings so you know what to look for when you're out and about. Then we're, I'm going to show you some of my pieces that I have and some of the special features that are on them. And also we'll go to eBay Solds and see what has Trafari been selling for lately. So stay tuned till the end. So let's get started. So today we're talking Trafari Jewelry. This is a company I have fell in love with over the past year and I'm finally getting to do a video of it and teach you a little bit about what I've learned over the past year about this company and why the pieces are so wonderful. So this company has been in business for almost a hundred years and they started over a hundred years ago in 1910, Gustavo Trafari came over to the US after learning the goldsmith trade in his country of Italy. I believe he learned it from his father. For two years, when he got to the United States, he collaborated with his uncle, Ludovico, in New York in creating jewelry and the company was called Trafari and Trafari. When his uncle le left the business, the name was just chopped down to one Trafari. And, uh, and then around 1925, Leo Krushman and Carl Fischel came into the picture and the company was then called KTF and obviously using their three names. At that time, that's the jewelry mark that they used. And you'll see it here on the left side on a piece of jewelry. In 1930, they hired a fabulous jewelry designer who used to work at Cartier and Van Cleef and created beautiful jewelry with sapphires and diamonds and gold and silver. But when he came to Trafari, he had to start producing, I don't want to say a lower end quality jewelry, but he wasn't able to use diamonds and sapphires and rubies anymore. So he had to come up with a way to put more jewelry out to the public where people could afford. So he had to use synthetic stones and cheaper metals and that type of thing. So was he able to do it? And how was he able to do it? He used less expensive materials to form costume jewelry, which is jewelry made with imitation gems. Since these pieces had imitation gems, he could make larger pieces like big flower brooches, and he could use more stones and unique stones. Particular style in the 1930s was called fruit salad. And most of these are signed KTF. As you can see on the screen, the uniqueness of the beads that they used. And these are mostly pastel beads that are called fruit salad. Trafari is known for signing all their pieces as the motto goes, if it isn't signed, it isn't Trafari. But I believe in the beginning they used hang tags, so there are pieces from the beginning that are not signed, but they're few and far between. It's hard to even find any pieces that have KTF on them. So they produced quality pieces and everyone seen their unique designs. In the 1940s, with the war going on, they were having to use more expensive metals because the cheaper metals they needed for war. After the war was over, people wanted jewelry they could afford. So in 1947, Trafari created and patented its own alloy metal that is resistant to tarnish called Trafarium. This is why you see many of the pieces in really good condition today, because it is tarnish resistant. You'll also see this beautiful eagle brooch that I believe Alfred designed. Then in the 1940s to 50s, lucite became popular, which imitates rock crystal, but really is a type of acrylic plastic. And this was used in the middle of animals or bugs, mostly brooches. The original maker of jelly bellies is what they call this which contained the center clear bead was questionable. We don't really know who created it. 
or I should say, I don't know who created it because I haven't found proof of any company specifically that has been the first maker of Jelly Bellies. I could be wrong. Please help me in the comments below if you know and you have um, evidence of it somewhere. But I've seen it both ways. I've heard it both ways. But I just haven't found any for sure. All I know is that in 1943, Trifari patented this rabbit on the left side, the design for this rabbit. And on the right, Coral patented one that's very similar in design in 1945. The earliest I could find for a Lucite piece like this was 1943. So I'm still not sure. I've heard Coral is the original maker of Jelly Bellies. And Trafari has a patent here that's earlier than Coro's. So I'm still not positive on who created these first. Either way, Lucite was popular and everybody was loving them. And it's not really considered a Jelly Belly if it's colored. The Jelly Belly only applies to the clear lucite pieces and it's usually in the center of the animal or insect so one of trifari's best selling items is the crown brooch it was presented in 1941 and marked trifari sterling and des patent pending design patent pending the crown brooch was proposed again in 1951 1955 1960 and the late 60s. So you could have a brooch that could be anywhere from 1941 to the late 60s. Each time that they made it and they reintroduced it, they had modified it and gradually pearls were added. So if you have a have one with pearls in it, it's probably the later ones. Trafari became the leader in costume jewelry due to Alfred Felipe. He and his team created exquisite pieces right up into the 1960s. But 90% of his pieces were traditional designs and sold to big box stores all across the USA. They were in business until 1975 when it was bought and sold several times, which by 2000, the Monet Group had moved production to, I believe, Puerto Rico. Monet is another company that was bought out from the same companies and moved to Puerto Rico. So I'm going to show you some particular beads and stones that Trafari used, and maybe this will help you recognize them faster when you're out looking for pieces. This first one is called Invisible Settings. And as you look at these pictures, you'll see that the, the stones go all the way to the edge of the piece and you don't hardly see any of the gold tone. All you see is rhinestones. It's completely filled. They're just gorgeous, beautiful pieces and they sell for high prices. We'll take a look at them soon. These are called rag dolls. These are definitely a signature of Trafari, and I believe Alfred Felipe is the designer of these. They Trafari did have multiple designers on staff, but I think Alfred was their highest end one, and he was in charge of the department. These shoe buttons, as you can see, are little round beads, probably glass, and in all different pastel colors and different colors with a rhinestone in the middle of them. They represent what he did at Cartier or Van Cleef with rubies and sapphires, and they had a little diamond in the middle. So this is representative of what he used to do with high-end jewelry. So his costume jewelry is just as gorgeous. It's just not the quality of the high-end gems. All right, I wanted to go through some of my Trafari brooches with you. Let's start with this one down here. This is a, an adorable little wheat brooch, and it has a heart that dangles on it with a house on it. And you can see on the back, it was made for Betty Crocker, Homemaker of Tomorrow, 1956. And it's got a crown trafari with a copyright symbol, so that means it's from 1955 to 1969. 
I guess they were given as awards to certain ladies for some reason. Not sure. That was back in the 50s. And then we have this cute little heart brooch that has rhinestones all over it. It looks like this one on the end is has been replaced. But other than that, it's really an old Trafari. Let's show, let's look closer. So on the back side, as you can see, the pin is kind of flattened on this one end. And then it has Trafari with no copyright symbol, with no crown on it, or no patent pending. That means it's an old Trafari, like in the very beginning when they had uh, jewels by Trafari and most of the stuff they had was hang tags. I believe this is one of those early, early Trafaris. But that one I have listed on eBay at the moment for $55, or around $55. Then this one is my all-time favorite Trafari brooch. I just love it. You can see it's kind of got dome-shaped glass beads in it, and they are prong set. And they were actually molded and then set into these little rings and then soldered together. Let's look at the back. Look how open the back is. It lets so much light through and these stones just glisten. It's got a real long pin clasp on it and at the end you can see the pin extends past the end so that means it's older and the the marking on it says trafari with the copyright symbol it's actually a crown trafari with the copyright symbol also has a pendant hook so you can hang it as an on a necklace so this was made between 1955 and 69 now don't mix this up with grapoi which is poured glass. This is molded glass. Poured glass is where they actually make these wire frames for each little section, and then they pour hot molded glass and hot molten glass into each little wire frame, and then it hardens inside, so it's fitted perfectly to the frame. If you look on the back of them, a lot of times the backs are rough, because they polish out the tops and they don't polish out the backs as well. So you would see them on Chanel and Dior and I believe Trafari did some of that, but they were more known to do their molded glass because it takes so much time to do the Grapoi. They said you could, they could put a hundred hours into a piece. So this was costume jewelry, if you remember. So we have have to use um, cheaper materials and it's going to have to take less time to make because you're selling it for a lot less. But just imagine how much time they put into this one piece. Right now I have this listed on eBay for $3.75, but I don't have any takers. So um, it'll probably move down some and I'm willing to accept offers, but... We'll see how it goes. I can keep it too. Over here we have some 1950s brooches and if you'll notice there are three of these are all white enamel and gold tone. So that was something that Trafari had done back in the 50s. Used a lot of different white enamel. Here's what the back side looks like and it's marked Crown Trafari with the copyright symbol, so actually 1955 to 69. This cruise ship, they called a junk boat, not a cruise ship, a junk boat. And there's the Crown Trafari symbol. This one is listed at about $50. These other ones are more in the 20s. This butterfly is really cute. It's white on the back as well. This one's almost solid white except for the pin. So pretty nice pieces. The boat is more flat. The wreath looking one is domed. The butterfly has a little bit of uh, dome to it. 
Then this last piece, I have a, a video out with this piece in it. This is something I wanted to show you again, though, because if you didn't see the other video, this one has beads in it that Trafari made. These look like baby teeth, and they call them the baby tooth brooch, and they make these in wreaths and other styles. But this grape one is definitely more rare, and it's um, more sought after. I do have it up on auction at the moment, and it has one bid for $750 right now. So when you're out and about, please take a look at these brooches if you ever see these baby teeth pearls on here. They're obviously faux pearls, but just a different type of pearl just to make Trafari stand out. That's what Gustavo and Alfred Felipe certainly wanted was to stand out among all the other costume jewelers. So that type of stone is something different and these molded glass pieces are something to keep an eye out for. All right, that's it. That's all the pieces I wanted to show you today. I do have many other pieces that are just your traditional gold brooches and um, necklaces and that type of thing. So, okay, so let's take a look at the markings. So on the top, we have the first marking, which was KTF for the three owners back in the 20s. And it was popular between 1920s to the 1930s when it changed over to the full name of Trafari and it was patent pending at the time so they had Trafari pat penned on most of their pieces from the 1930s to the 1955 and at the same time frame they introduced the crown Trafari where they put the crown over top the T all the same company just they added the the crown and it's still the company's still called Trafari, but when we refer to the time frames that jewelry was made, we usually say the crown Trafari time frame. So the first or the third one down is the first crown Trafari logo. So 1937 to 1955, you'll see this one with no copyright symbol until 1955 when copyright became um, a thing, then you'll see the copyright symbol after the crown Trafari. So 1955 to 1969, that one was popular. Until the late 70s when they were bought out and the uh, oval-shaped Trafari with the copyright symbol was popular. And that was from the 1970s to the 1980s. And then it switched over to Trafari TM, which is trademark. And that's the last we see of Trafari until 1999. And the company was sold out. We're going to jump over to the eBay solds and see what the values of some of this Trafari jewelry is going for. Let's hop over to eBay. Okay, here we are on the eBay site, and up on this top line, I plugged in Trafari. Let's just take a quick look and see what the average listings look like. This first one, obviously, is like the one I just showed you with the baby teeth in it, and this one's listed for $539. It's from 1959, they have it, and they call it the Sereno Baby Tooth Wreath, and... Here's a, one on the right, this pave. Look at these. Um, the setting on this is just um, filled to the T. So you cannot even hardly see the setting. This one's listed at $325. And these are just some of the most common or most recent listings. This one is really pretty, a large pin. With the blue glass rhinestone from the 50s, they got it at $3.99. I think that's a little steep, but I could be wrong. This one was done by Alfred Felipe. Isn't that just a gorgeous butterfly? Of course, you don't see this on too many um, traditional butterflies. I'm going to show you what I have down here on the left. It says sold items. Let's click on that and it will give us what sold recently. Look at this gorgeous. This is a 
looks like poured glass. Let's look at this closer. It might be molded glass. So these pieces are just faceted rhinestones. They're not poured. That is really pretty. $305 that sold for. And they call it just a rare, gorgeous, faceted, open back blue glass on gold gilt metal. Pretty piece. Let's see what else? This looks like an Alfred Felipe. Yes, it is. He's made several different bow brooches that are pretty valuable. $306 it sold for with seven bids. This nautical one is really pretty, $183. Some of these uh, brushed gold ones sell for quite a bit. That one went for $55. Okay, close your eyes a minute. I'm going to scroll real fast. I'm going to go up here where it says ended recently, and I'm going to do highest first. And up here, I'm going to put in minus lot. Because we don't want to see the lots. We want to see the individual pieces. Of course, these still come up. Look at this piece. This is one of Jewels of India. They had different series they came out with. Jewels of India was one of them. That's really a popular one. 49 bids on it for $4,438. And this one over here has just got moonstone beads. And it sold for $3,250. That's a parure set. Demi parure is two. Parure is three pieces or more. This piece right here is really not a good picture of this, but it is a gorgeous invisible setting piece. Let's see if I have any better pictures on here. This sold for $2,800. As you can see, the stones go right up to the edge of the setting. It doesn't even look like there's hardly a setting on it. And the rhinestones all the way down the stem or baguettes all the way down the stem. Just a gorgeous piece. $2,850 it sold for. Here's another invisible setting one. This one is a fruit salad. See the beads? They kind of leaf, a leaf looking design to them, kind of a leaf and flowers. $2,500. Cool nautical anchor, $2,400. Invisible waffle, they call this one, probably because of this, the waffle um, stone was pressed like a waffle. Oh, yeah, I looked them. That's the one thing about Trafari is they have different types of stones different either their glass or synthetic but they're still different that's a fur clip there's the back the, the ones with, that have the spikes are for fur the ones that are clips are for scarves they call this ruby emerald sapphire it could possibly be real secondary stone is sapphire I'm sure Trafari did do some specialty pieces where they did use actual gemstones in them. But I'm sure they're few and far between. Let's go back up, sorry. Flip back up here and look for the crown brooches that we talked about. Why is it not pulling up any crown brooches? Because nobody has sold any? 
Let's see. Here's that one that I had a picture of that's just gorgeous. Th almost $3,000. This is a fruit salad one. See, they call this a jelly belly, but it's definitely not a jelly belly. That's fruit salad. Here's some rag dolls, or pom they call them pom poms, pom pom and tom tom. This has got to be from the 1940s, this eagle. Here's another fruit salad. Ah, here's a crown brooch. 1940s sterling Alfred Felipe royal crown brooch and earring set. Oh, they have earrings that go with it too. Lovely. $1,200 they're asking for it is actually a pretty good price. Here's some rag dolls. They call them Pom Pom and Tom Tom. Let's take a little bit closer. $1,100. Would you pick them up knowing that they were going to be worth over $1,000? See the pretty glass, how it's glowing and pressed. They did a lot of pressed type glass. I need to go back to solds. Apparently there's not been any crown brooches that have sold recently. This is similar to the crown brooch. They call it the crown scepter. Here's another Jewels of India and another Jewels of India. Here's another fruit salad. Hopefully this has given you an idea. This is the invisible setting, another crown scepter, another fruit salad, another invisible setting. Here's some crowns, $995 it sold for. Not sure what the double thing is. If that's two, I doubt it. All right, let's go back up and look at Lucite. Lucite. I'm just going to put Lucite in for now and see what pulls up. Minus lot. Oh, here we go. Lovely. Swan. And I guess it officially can be called a jelly belly because it is clear, clear center belly. $1,125 or $1 it sold for. And it even came in the box. Nice. I'm trying to figure out what the other two round ones are. They call it a brooch set. They're brooch pieces. Here's the marking. It's got a crown over the trafari and it says Des Pat Pend. So design patent pending. Sterling. Nice piece. They call that the jelly belly. Officially, it can be. Here's a horse with a lucite jelly belly in the center for about $900. This one's about $900. Here's a butterfly that's $900. And this is another picture of, um, they call it Moonshell, and it's by Alfred Felipe. And it's popular. People love it, and I've seen it sold many times, but I've never found one. So if you ever run across a simple 
design, even though it's pretty elaborate. Look at this pig. That's another Alfred Felipe. He doesn't do anything traditional. He does a lot of elaborate designs. And this little red lucite, almost like a heart. They're calling it a jelly belly, but officially it's not. This is pretty. I had a necklace that had these blue stones in it and I sold it way too cheap and it sold within minutes. $400. Here is some of the shoe button stones. Let's go up and plug in shoe button. Look at this lovely bracelet and this pretty pink molded one. Oh, look at this. About $200 it sold for. This is a fur clip. Here's the back. They don't take a picture of the mark. Let's see if I can get that, get a close up. It's not letting me get the zoom. See how it indents in the top and then they put a rhinestone in the top. Pretty cool piece. There's not too many out there, but they sell for over $100. So make sure you keep an eye out for them little shoe button pins. Let's look at this one real quick. Oh, isn't that pretty? With the blue stones contrasting. Gosh, that's so pretty. I love the little shoe buttons. I think they're adorable. I am going to do brushed gold because I've been having luck with finding brushed gold pieces lately. As you can see, it's kind of a matte color gold. This one doesn't show it as well. It's not your high gloss. It's like brushed down. But look what the prices are going for on these. Well, that's an Alfred Felipe. Here's one that's not, but still 200, around $200. This one's adorable with these little balls in it. Here, look at the leaves on here. This is definitely brushed gold, $219. Let's see if mine's in here. I have had some similar to these. That's a pretty bracelet. Brush gold over $100. Now, mind you, I am looking at these from, here's the one piece I had that's like this. And I had earrings that matched it, but they weren't these. It's like this piece. Mine sold for $90 and I had like 10 bids on it right away for 80 in the 80s and I didn't accept any of them. And finally the person bought it for 90, which it looks like I could have probably sold it for more. This gives you an idea of what some of these brush gold pieces are selling for. I know gold's supposed to be in this year and it's supposed to be popular. So definitely keep your eye out for them. That's a pretty piece. Here's my set, sold for 90. Apparently I could have got more for that. This one sold for 95, which is pretty similar. All right, I'm going to eliminate brush gold and just go to recent lowest first because some pieces will sell for little or nothing. And sometimes people don't know what they have. Sometimes they just want to get rid of some of their stock. Sometimes they put it up for auction. 
and they don't start the bidding at a high enough price. As you can see, we're talking under $10 for a lot of these with shipping, which is pretty reasonable, pretty reasonable. Trafari is probably one of the better, this looks like one that I have. It's one of the better brands to look for. You're, I mean, that you're gonna find more common out and about. So I just thought I would share this with you and I hope this has helped you some. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and look for our next video out. Thanks for joining me. See you on the next one.